Well, it's a topic that's been brought up and probably made famous by the Grade, grade Cricketer, cricketer. Pod- podcast, indeed. The Grade Cricketer, oh, yeah. probably, even before their podcast on Twitter, they were pretty active about the champing. And I didn't know much about it probably before that. Um, but I can understand it. In cricket, it's a massive no-no. Like, as yeah. soon as it's brought up, I don't know what it's like for you at an elite level has, but definitely for us, it's probably you only use it when you're actually trying to alpha someone, like yeah, try and belittle someone. No, it's the exact same thing at any level, I think, but I, I still get it a fair bit. Random people message me if, I, if I've had a good game, they'll say, well done, champ, or something. And I, I know they probably mean well. Some of them, I think, should know better. Some of them, I know, probably don't know better, so that's fair enough, but... But yeah, I get it. And I'm like, oh no. I'll be interested to know if it's the same in other countries too, because I remember when I went to England in 2012, like the guy, the guy said it. He'd just say like "champ, champ" like yeah. all the time, and yeah, it yeah. obviously didn't mean it in, in a it. derogatory fashion. Yeah. It just was like a term of endearment over there. And I was sitting there every time, like, oh, I just don't yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> what about a few blokes came back from England to Tigers this year and started calling everyone kid? Oh, no, yeah. I'm not big on that either. Yeah, no, no. yeah they go a lot of sons and kids yeah. and youngster and stuff over there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I remember I'll share it, Jack Beath. Um, he came back from England with a UK accent as well, and that I mean that's just another story. As well. <laughs> that's just terrible. Yeah. So yeah, no. But yeah, um, I think for this listener, if you're in that situation, like, it's a totally different environment. I think you sort of have to just cop. Well, we might have really to get now. ourselves in the bodybuilding environment. Skin. Yeah, so I mean, I I'm pretty you're close. Probably the yeah. most. Like yeah. You're probably the person that needs to get in there. Yeah, the, yeah. Do bodybuilders have rugs on their chest? I, guess, yeah, I don't know. We'll ask Lawrence that. He sent one in. Maybe he can send another in. Oh, we'll yeah. skin get in there with the... Well, we, no, you're manscaped now, eh? Uh, or is he? Oh, hard to say. Probably could use a uh, double going over at the mm, moment. Okay. So, yeah. uh, have been manscaped recently. Anyway, we, we probably don't really know from uh from the bodybuilding side of things <laughs> but i would still be finding it awkward so Speaking i'm with you yourself. lawrence <laughs> Cody, obviously w- once retired bodybuilder <laughs> <laughs> we haven't <laughs> actually explained why you're the sporting hero of the week so i'm going to go through a few little stats for our listeners of of why you've got that and it came playing a1 warehouse cricket uh for was it for pine rivers you're playing for yeah playing for pine and uh so in one of your games you got seven for 36 in the first innings followed by eight for 28 in the second innings not a bad not a bad effort in that match and then followed it up with six for five in the next game um so that's uh that's why you're sporting hero of the week so well done six for four that last game wasn't a very close one either can you tell us maybe the amount of runs your team scored versus the opposition in that one well, it was even uh, a nice little village cricket moment too when the covers were taken off at 7 a.m. for a downpour to happen at about 8 a.m. And the boys were using uh, a lawnmower to try and dry the pitch out. Okay. Uh, we lost a toss. I think we hit five for 200 declared and then had about an hour and a half at them in the Arvo and uh, we ended up batting for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> but, uh, oh. we Bowled him out for 23. <laughs> um, now, full disclosure, sure Jamie, you actually have played first grade cricket before, first grade Premier cricket in Queensland. So this level that you're playing, is it slightly, I'm not looking for you to be really arrogant here, but is it fair to say it's fractionally beneath you? Uh, I guess if you look at my first grade stats, you'd probably say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... If you look at maybe like a second grade stats, you might say, yeah, it would be a little bit below me. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I played five T20s in ones over Christmas and realised that uh, when I got hit into someone's house that it probably wasn't for me coming back. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to make up for that. Yeah, I know. I thought it was coming. That none for 35 off two overs in your first first grade game this year wasn't wasn't great yeah, viewing, was it? Rough. No, it was good viewing for Sunny Coast. Yeah. <laughs> watching at home. And for the old bloke eating cornflakes on his balcony. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you happen to have an Alchemy Cordials Australia beverage before that before like big fifteen for sixty four game? Yeah, mm. surely that was the reason. There were rumours on my cricket day, huh? Was there? Yeah, I'd was probably a... go for a uh, more of a, a goatee option, and pr- I'd probably instead of beers, I probably went with a vodka OJ or something. I think beforehand, okay, and right. I think I was a bit slim dusty that morning. Right. Uh, well, unfortunately, we're not sponsored by any vodka companies. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. if you can get sponsored by Grey Goose, I'd happily put my hand up to do some <laughs> some, uh, some potties with the boys. <laughs> All right, mate, we'll get on that. Thank you so much for being on the podcast with us, Jr. 
No, thanks, boys. Mum's going to be proud. I've finally cracked the big time. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to your mum for us. Good, and best wishes. Oh, well, thanks, Rove. <laughs> <laughs> I stumbled across an article about the Olympics. It came out today, I think, that the 2021 Olympics, which should have been the 2020 Olympics, are in Japan, I believe, and they're not allowing international spectators, which is obviously quite big news. That's massive news. Yeah, normally you would have... Spectators at the Olympics. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, you yes. would. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really did your research. Yeah. <laughs> with with the Rio Olympics, um, was Peter Allen there? I don't know. Well, you know, when his baby, when his baby smells a re, he goes to Rio. Ooh. 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 <laughs> That was Come a skin stretch. <laughs> that, that's another one of those jokes that'd be great if I got it. Yeah. Uh, hell. Sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> that was pretty hard, though. Sorry, well, kid. Also, didn't that bloke turn out to be not a great unit that sung that song? I don't know. Oh, okay. I might be thinking of another guy. Okay, well, that's, yeah, well, that's quite not, awkward that's if I'm just <laughs> throwing any massive <laughs> accusations <laughs> that we don't Accused know anything him. about. It's not a Jared Hayne type No, I was going to say Jared Hayne, but I didn't know what we could do there. No, uh, yeah, well. Can't edit I think he's now. done enough. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyways, moving on. So that's uh, that's all the real statistics that I had. I was just going to get into some facts. So obviously, 2021 Olympics in Japan, no international spectators. That'll be the first time ever since the beginning of the modern Olympics in Athens in 1896 where there have been no international spectators. Um, that first Olympics in Athens included 60,000 spectators, approximately. I'm, I'm guessing they probably... Didn't have great technology back in 1896. I, uh, so. I reckon there probably wouldn't have been too many international spectators there at the yeah, time. Either. There no. might have been some from countries close by, but there wouldn't yeah. be too many people flying in from Australia to watch in Athens in yes. 1896. Yeah, yeah, that would have been tough to do. But yeah, def- <laughs> <laughs> there were definitely a few of them. There was a few, was a few international. <laughs> uh, there were 280 athletes from no, 13 they don't have nations. Class. And, and <laughs> 40, there were 43 events. Um, and I just said, I just said there were, there were 35 events in the 2016, didn't I? So, so there were obviously a few events have gone missing. There are some events that are no longer in the Olympics. Well, it changes and, every year, um, every every four years. Yeah, right? yeah, every, not every year. Thanks. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so so obviously there are some that have gone, some that are no longer involved in the Summer Olympics. And I mean, the, yeah, there's a decent list of them. I think at one stage they were even doing like arts and crafts and stuff in there oh, at, through the early 90s. Oh, um, but the the most the Did one that BMX at the, the first Olympics. <laughs> But the one that stood out to me the most that has gone missing is solo synchronized swimming. Okay. That is <laughs> nothing to do with by definition. <laughs> That's That's synchronized with who? I did not no, I don't know. I was rattled when I read the that. The music, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Well, that know. was in the first Olympics, was it? Not not necessarily the first one. It was oh, right. it has been an Olympic sport at some stage mm. and is no longer an Olympic sport. Mm. But yeah, I was baffled by that. Just oh, that's a good was, it, was it just in swimming? one? Was it just in one Olympics and then they realised? Yeah, it was maybe. Like, perhaps. Did they realise the very definition of the <laughs> event? What <laughs> synchronised <Lord>. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's this word, man? Uh, uh. We should have probably looked that up prior to the Olympic Games. <laughs> mm, yes. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so, so modern Olympics obviously started at Athens 1896. I think they've been going for quite a bit longer than that. Actually, well, they started back in, I think, the 8th century BC. So yeah, quite quite ancient Rome. I'm pretty sure there was a big old break before they started them back up again in 1896. Does anyone know more about the history of Olympics than I do? No, no one can. Your skin stats. I'm skin, yeah, I'm skin stats with me with me. 45 minutes of research. Though. Look at me go. So I don't know. BC stand for before Christ. I believe so. AD doesn't stand does for not, after death. Does not stand for that. Yeah. No. Stands for after uh, no, no, it's adodonomy. Ado, ado, not ado. Josh <laughs> Added denosine <laughs> triphosphate. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Anyway, yeah. yeah so anyway, so back to the Olympics. The early athletes didn't really care that much about sponsorships and and things like that. They uh, they competed naked. Was that in the Winter Olympics as well? Because probably be quite, not. That'd be quite think, challenging. Yeah, no, maybe not that. <laughs> Man, that goes well. I think we're early. talking early as in before the modern Olympics. Why the hell is he stuck early to the box like that? Oh. <laughs> Early as in back in the 8th eighth, eighth century BC. Yeah. Right, okay, yes. That guy's throwing a javelin. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> BC, before circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all I've got. Uh, good. Before clothes, <laughs> as it turns out. <laughs> before clothes, yeah. I guess one other point. Um, Kevy Walters' interview post-game after their, um, yeah. after their, their loss to, I guess, little brother, um, uh, the Titans. I think, Lee, we've got a bit of... Um, Audio for those who haven't heard. The performance of David Pafito, is that something that you just 
come to expect every now and again. It's not something he can do every week. But... Was he out there tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice he played. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, what are our thoughts, boys? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very odd response. Like, I feel like it could be taken a quite, lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Quite a lot of ways. I think he means, I think he's trying to come across as yeah. like, he caused us that many headaches, like, and he's sort of yeah. like yeah. tongue in cheek yeah, going I think like, that's oh, the yeah. point. Surely you clarify does. after it'd be, nah, I actually played pretty well. Yeah. If you take it literally, it's quite funny. Yeah. Like, Oh, did he play tonight? Yeah, he's like, guy that scored twice. Yeah, and he... the, the guy that kept running over your halfback, which was the move. <laughs> you know, that guy. Yeah. Right, yeah, he did, actually. <laughs> um, I've got one more story, too, guys, just before we finish. Uh, on the weekend, I went to an establishment where um, one of my mates was wearing thongs, and we were going to go upstairs, we were hoping, to get a drink. And the guy sort of said, the security guard said, uh, sorry, guys, can't go upstairs with thongs. Uh, they're not going to cut the mustard. You had to have closed in shoes to go up. And so that obviously cut our, cut our day a bit short, our afternoon a bit short. And um, I sort of, with the throwaway line, was like, oh, geez, you need to be able to Uber Eats like footwear for like people that in this sort of situation that have made the wrong choice. And same with like long pants and, you know, you need to have long pants or button up shirt. You should be able to Uber Eats some, some shoes, especially. Mm-hmm. And uh, this other fellow was like, nah, that's called. Uber cleats, <laughs> oh, and it got me thinking, Skid. <laughs> I feel like Uber is really missing. Just they could be dominating the market so much. Yeah, I mean, that's like, a massive you, market. <laughs> if you think about it, they honestly could. So, like, if you just needed someone to uh, tell a lie for you, like you need a sick day at work, and you need someone to take the phone call and make it for you, just call Uber deceits. Okay. <laughs> so many skin on. Can't oh, find <laughs> can't find somewhere to sit down. Whole restaurants booked out. Yep. Uber seats. <laughs> oh. You got one for whiskey? Uh, <laughs> I think Uber's really missing a market. They yeah. can just take over. Um what have I got? Uh, have, haven't done enough study for your uni exam. Oh, I was gonna do the same one. Uber cheats. Oh Good. Nice. that's excellent. Good. Has forgot oh. forgot someone's phone number. Yeah. Give me the Uber dates. I got one. It's okay. not very good. Okay. <laughs> There's no such thing. Yeah, no such thing. There's no such... What are no bad ideas in a thought shower? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, say you're struggling with, like, your Excel and, like, your, your tax invoices. <laughs> Uber sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Uber spreadsheets. <laughs> but if you're, like, on a walk, going for a walk on the dog or something and you just need something to pump you up, Uber Beats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah right. that is good as well. Wow. Okay. This is the worst segment we've ever done, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Comfortably. Comfortably. <laughs> well, that's good news because that Uber completes the segment. Yeah. <laughs> and that is definitely all we have time for, guys. Yeah.